Hello, my fellow gamers. Welcome, welcome back to the game here. Welcome back to Devil Premonition 2. Last time, we got to know some residents of Lacare. And today, we're going to tackle on the frozen, or the frozen Mr. Foods. York, that was mighty quick. The I bet my CLG's got a lot to learn from you. Uh, uh, by the way, Mr. York, looks to me like you aren't packing anything. I was on vacation in New Orleans before I happened to stop by here. <laughs> well, shoot. That won't do. Here, I got something I think you'll like. <laughs> I call him Mr. Alligator. Badass, ain't he? What? It's a tranquilizer gun for the gators. What? <laughs> And here's a radio. Well, With thank this, you. you won't have to worry about any expensive roaming fees. <laughs> Might take you a while to get used to them, but you'll get it. Try yeah, letting them rip a few times. Ain't no need to hold back out here. I mean, we are in the South. They like shooting guns. Oh, we're destroying the wooden boxes. We're not. So basic. Okay, that's interesting. Our ball destroyed a box. Hmm. Now this is an intriguing weapon. For a tranquilizer gun, it really packs a punch. But I'm afraid I'll decline. After all, this town is peaceful, isn't it? Well, sure is peaceful. At least the humans are, but the animals huh, are a different story. Uh, remember what I named it? There are some real mean-ass gators out there in the swamps, and every now and then, they wander into town. One of them even went and ate a kid once. It happened a long time ago, but still. One chomps all it takes. They swallow down every last bit of you. Poor kid's parents didn't even know what to put in his coffin. The well, worst part is, that taught the gators just how tasty we humans are. So now, those suckers just attack on sight. Man-eating crocodiles will feast tonight in Blood Swamp. Him and York are going to get very much along. You know he's fibbing, right? Gators don't attack folks. I never heard about no kid getting swallowed by a gator. Actually, Patricia, you're wrong. I'm what? Alligators do attack people, and it could happen in any town. Huh? Alligator, 1980. Directed by Louis Teague. It takes place in the Midwest, I believe. A teenage girl's pet alligator gets flushed down the toilet. Then, in the sewer, it feeds on the corpses of dogs that were used as test subjects for an experimental growth formula. After growing over 30 feet, it finally starts to go after humans. It's an extremely, yes, an extremely edifying movie. Edifying. Back when I first saw it, I had a pet hamster. Hey, Agent York, what's your first order of business? You're in charge now, remember? Well said, Patricia. <laughs> I nearly lost sight of my true goal. Melvin, I couldn't help but notice the name on the side of that truck. This facility is connected to the victim, isn't it? Oh, oh, right, yeah, I reckon I better start from there. I'm gonna tell it to you straight right from the beginning, Mr. York. All right, let's As you it. guessed, this warehouse is run by the Clarksons. The victim's father, Danny Clarkson, is the one who manages the whole place. Okay. Okay, but why did he choose to store her body in his own warehouse, right? I thought you were forcing that. Well... That's because there ain't no other place to store it. Okay, thank you. Our town has a clinic inside a church, but no more. Whenever someone kicks the bucket, we just bury him in the graveyard right outside of town. But not this time. We got a murder on our hands this time. Yeah! We need to give Lisa's body an autopsy and keep it stored, right? Oh, yeah. So we had no choice but to rent out a corner of this warehouse. I yeah. see. So that's what led to the ingenious choice to store the victim's body in a facility that her family owns. 
Anywho, this is where the real story begins. Okay. Truth is, a few days before you got here, Lisa's body went missing. Missing? Yeah. All of a sudden, poof. Okay. Did you leave the warehouse unlocked? I most certainly did not. I locked the whole place up and made sure no one could get inside. No one stole the original key, and I couldn't find any fingerprints at the scene. So, in other words, this is a locked room mystery. The body of a beautiful <laughs> young girl walks at mid- Please hit him. I hate Thank you. <laughs> all right, all right, CLG. Reckon I should have told you about this earlier when you first said you wanted to come here. <laughs> it just didn't seem like the time or places I remember. Anywho, how about we call it a day and head back to my office? You can go through all the files there. No, thank you. This is what I came to investigate. But Lisa's body isn't here anymore. You sure? That doesn't bother me one bit, Melvin. You see, I met a skeletal gentleman on my way oh, here. No. And he was kind enough to give me an oracle. Let's just do this. I, that kind of explains a little bit of the uh, intro now. The body went missing. You holding up okay, CLG? You sure you don't want to wait outside? Why is she wearing shorts in a deep freezer? <sighs> I'll be fine, Daddy. Just make sure you don't take your eyes off of him. He's so selfish and inconsiderate. I'm still not convinced he's actually a real FBI agent. Mm -mm. Look, he's talking to himself again. Zack, this is the ambiguous zero. The deep freeze. Let's hurry up and find that flying serpent, shall we? The morph. It, it. I mean, it can't be that hard. I mean, literally, it's just a Ugh. meat freezer. Good God almighty. This place always gives me goosebumps, no matter how many times I come here. Yes, it's quite the fun house. Truly a dazzling place. Meat entertainment. That's the only way to describe it. What? Woven together by life, frozen in time, a visceral musical. Symphony. We eat all this in order to survive. Yes, truly a symphony. Life and death resonating together. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I am. Uh, cool? <laughs> Whoa now, CLG. Since when were you interested in this kind of stuff? What are you so surprised for, Daddy? I'm more mature than you are. Right. I've seen way more realistic corpses on CSI, you know. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> At first, Zack, I was shocked by the notion of storing a victim's body alongside food. But as I gaze upon this hanging garden, I realize it's just another scene of violent, depraved murder. Yes. All we need to do is change our point of view, and things will expose themselves in utterly new ways. I mean, that is true. Frozen fish, frozen meat. Dang, okay, if you go to zero, you get nothing. I'm gonna save real quick. I don't know what the heck is with the save system. Melvin, I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you a personal question. In the hotel parking lot, when I first met you, the picture you had on your dashboard happened to catch my eye. What? Oh, her? Yeah, that's my lady, all right. Candy. Her name's Candy. The prettiest girl in town, which makes me the happiest boy. A shooting star landed in a rural town, right on top of a man who now has a meteor-struck heart. 
Oh my god. You always keep her photo with you? <sighs> you bet I do. The truth is, Candy's a little sick right now. She can't even leave the house no more. So I always keep her photograph with me. It kind of feels like we're always together, you know? I see. You care for your wife a great deal. But this means that... Yeah, that's right. My mama had me before she married daddy. Eh. But it don't matter. He's still my real daddy to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, CLG. And you're my pride and joy. Well, Zach, isn't this a heartwarming scene? But there's one thing I just can't get out of my mind. Don't you think that photograph looked a bit too old? Perhaps Candy is already... No, let's not think about that. He can hear you. It might be a private matter, just like you, Zach. Alright, let's open this for real. Alright, this is where the morgue was. Or is? Here we are, Zach. The morgue. They stored the victim's body in a cold storage warehouse operated by her family. I'd love to shake the hand of whoever came up with that one. Hey, Agent York. Hey, what? Did you just come here to laugh at rural officers who are doing the best they can? We don't have any special facilities like you people. What else did you expect us to do, huh? What do you mean, you people? Don't compare us with city folk. This is Lucare! Or maybe you're just disappointed that you didn't get to see the bloated, decomposing corpse of a young girl. You go for the jugular. Sorry, you're right. I went a bit too far just now. But don't misunderstand. I honestly think it's a fantastic idea. I'd never try and bully your daddy. <laughs> Better not. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. There's a shiny over there. All right, mission six done. Mission seven. I want the shiny. Use visions, okay. Oh, freak, uh... Just big footprints. Zack, these are human footprints, and they're extremely large. Yes, Zack, I agree. These footprints must belong to someone who's used to walking around in cold temperatures. Yeah. This frost is shaped like something we're very used to seeing. That's right, a body bag. Lisa's body must have been left here. But there are no signs that the bag was dragged away. So our criminal must possess monstrous strength. These pallets are a mess. <laughs> Looks like this area isn't used often. Still, the idea to store a body here, it's a novel, sophisticated idea unlike anything I'd ever come up with. What? Boxes of the past or presents of the future? Either way, this is a curious time capsule. That's irrelevant. Forgotten boxes. Looks like shelled headless shrimp. When were these boxes brought here? And when will they be taken away? Never. Zach, can you feel it? The perpetual, unstoppable flow of time. We don't talk about that. That causes crises. Crises? Boxes that got left behind. I can't tell what's inside. What do you think, Zach? I'm gonna go with... Okra. What? Yeah, okra. I'm sure it must be okra. That's a staple of the South. Is it? I mean, I live in West Virginia, so, uh... Zach, can you see that? Look closely. That's right. There are four imprints in the frost on the top of this. It's hard to believe, but I think these are fingerprints. Yes, Zach, that would lead one to believe that the body napper is a giant who's over ten feet tall. What? There's no way the body napper is ten feet tall. Seems like our flying serpent isn't here. Is this everything, Melvin? 
there aren't any other rooms in this warehouse? No special rooms? Well, there is the luxury foods warehouse. Luxury foods? Why didn't you... Well, just thought you wanted to see where the body... Uh, I mean, I just thought you were only interested in warehouse number two. Besides, it's underground, so it's even colder than this. Uh, you sure you really want to go down there? You could darn well freeze to death. All life will come to mm. an end in the icebound zone. <laughs> you feel me? Dino might. Let's head there at once. I'm sure that must be where we're meant to go. But, but what about searching for Lisa's body? All we need to do is find a ten foot tall man with monstrous strength. That giant knows where she is. Uh. Ten foot tall? But finding the flying serpent is more important right now. Now please, guide me to the luxury foods warehouse at once. These luxury foods are most likely being used in local Cajun cuisine. I'm so excited to see what we'll find. Aren't you, Zach? What? This is a prequel after all, so I'm wondering if this is before he starts being more uh, discreet with Zach. Which would make a lot of sense to me. Man, he's doing a good job guiding us here. I forgot, I can't just, just hold the button and go for it. Uh, that elevator needs a key, Mr. York. Do you have one? Actually, no. I didn't think you'd ever want to go down there. So I didn't bother to go and get one. Well then, would you go and get one now? CLG, I know. I'll tell it to him straight. Uh, thing is, Mr. York, you know the Clarksons? The folks who own this place? Well, Not really. They don't too much like the police. <sighs> Dang it. And they sure as hell don't like them when they're my color. Oh, okay. There it is. It was, uh, real hard for me to get permission to open up this place for you to search through. So they ain't gonna be too happy if I go back to them now, asking for another key. What should we do then? Let's just find a worker here who can lower the elevator for us instead. All they need to do is take a break from their work for a couple minutes. And what am I supposed to do? Just stand here and pretend like nothing's happening? Yeah, you FBI folks are good at that, right? <laughs> That's always what I see you doing on TV. Really? That was the fast like Okay. Bullfrog leg. Okay, I can't just ask you. Bullfrog huh. Why is that red? Can I move this? Zach, I think we can move this. Oh. Better check back here as well, just to be on the safe side. Okay. Shiny! Tongue. I'm assuming you can just eat these. I don't really want the map. Focus. Catfish. Oh god, do I have to fish too in this game? I don't feel we gotta do that eventually. If I go 100% route again. Let's be honest, we all know I'm eventually gonna do it. Freak. Okay. I'm a bit confused. 
I gotta block my path? Oh, that's not where I think it leads. Okay, it's somewhere else. I was thinking it was leading back to where we started. I see a red thing, so I'm gonna guess the key's randomly there. Zack, the human ability to adapt is a frightening thing. Is he falling asleep? Some humans cold? have the power to sleep anywhere as long as they set their minds to it. Now we should... No need to worry. This facility no longer has a body to steal. What else do they have to lose? A few cans of crawfish? I feel bad for him, but it's for the sake of the investigation. Wait, do you want Juma to steal it and you're not even... Uh, this is where I thought it led. Okay. Like I, said, I have played this part before, but I don't remember. And that's the problem. Alright. Mission non complete. Mr. York, did you find a key? Ha! Now that's my special agent. There ain't no stopping you. Alright, go with dramatic monologues. Wanna head straight down? You bet. Let's sally forth, Melvin. Sally forth? The heck's gonna be in a freaking luxury food place. Zach, look at that thermometer. Zero degrees Fahrenheit. Or minus 17.7 degrees Celsius. So is this our zero? This is the ambiguous zero. Man up good. Hey, Avery! Open the damn door, Avery! Oh, it ain't no use, Mr. York. Once Avery starts working on something, that's all he sees. He just tunes out everything else. Good way to live. We'll have to wait until he finishes and comes out to us, I reckon. Or we could come back tomorrow. I disagree, Melvin. Time may be on our side, but that doesn't mean we should waste it. You gave me Mr. Alligator precisely for moments like these, didn't you? Wait, Mr. York! Those tranquilizers may be non-lethal, but it's still dangerous to use them on humans. Of course, Melvin. I never said I was going to shoot him. Oh. You're going to shoot some meat to get his attention. I'm right, ain't I? Mission 10. That actually worked. He's probably thinking, how'd that even get down? Cause I'm like, how did that even get down? This is Mr. York, an agent from the FBI. Dang, you're tall. Hi, Avery. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Uh, please, call me York. York? Uh, you a smarty pants, hmm? No? <laughs> He's shy than he looks. Come on, just settle down, Avery. Tell him what this here place is for. Uh. Lots of expensive food here. Yep. Mighty precious to the Clarksons. So I gotta guard it. I see. So, you're this area's keeper? Oh, I help with the research, too. I do like research. Mm. <laughs> research? What are you talking about, Avery? This doesn't look like a lab to me. Oh, ain't no lab. It's a warehouse. Ain't no lab. Uh, smarty pants scientist 
does the research. <laughs> I ain't no smarty pants, you know. He's a bit slow in the mind, but he ain't a bad guy. I kind of gathered that. Uh, your story about the giant who carried Lisa. Don't tell me you think it's him. I mean, it's true that he's free to come and go as he pleases in this warehouse, but... No, as far as I can tell, he's just a bit over 6'5". The one who moved Lisa's body must be at least 10 feet tall. He's clearly too short. <laughs> too short, huh? Well, if you ever happen to find a man who makes him look small, I sure like to meet him. I mean... <laughs> Lisa... What? H hey, cut it out! <sighs> Lisa... Why? Avery, that's not Lise. Not... Lise? This is Melvin's daughter, and my precious assistant. Unfortunately, Elise is no longer with us. Elise! Elise! My fault! My fault! Oh. He, uh, I guess he sort of liked Lise, you know? Let's see, the poor fella's got himself a child like mine. You know how normal kids tease other kids in order to get attention? Well, with this big lug, sometimes folks who don't know him too well see something and end up calling the police. But I know that deep down, He's got a good heart. Hey, Mr. York, I'll keep him busy, but I'd appreciate it if you'd hurry this particular inspection along. Just holler at me if you find anything. I reckon that'll make it easier for you to go do your thing, yeah? Melvin, I think you're finally starting to catch on. Wow, okay, so... The Flying Serpent's the Dragonfly! Tongue alligators. I suppose. Oh, but that's pushing Oops. it. They'll never read. All right. The first thing we're actually gonna do is we're gonna end things off today. Next time on Dairy Permission Two, we're gonna tackle on the the luxury freezer and find what we need to find. I'll see you then. <laughs>